I'm going to show you how to make a solitaire ring with bezel set diamond shoulders. I've got a two carat diamond here, very nice quality, and it's 8.3 millimeters in diameter. She wants a simple four claw setting set quite low as well with diamonds in the shoulders. So these are the diamonds. And I'm going to be rolling this short ways to get some height on it. And I might need to also put it through lengthways as well. So I'm going to cut it a little bit short. I'll, I'm pretty confident that this will be more than enough to do the setting. Keep the filings clean. In other words, don't file another metal. Um, at the same time, or whilst you're doing the job, so we keep it all separate. We'll curl one end. And the other. I'll use the side of my bench peg. See already, it looks as though I need to take out a little bit more just need to cut off enough so that when I look down on the stone I can't see any of that setting Sure, I can't see the setting when I look directly down. I'll put a slight taper on it now. It's not going to be the full 17 degree taper, so I'll just make sure it doesn't fill all the space inside the collet hole there. Check that out. 18 karat white gold here I'll be using and this I'll use for the shank. I'll roll it down in the middle and uh, and then I'll just widen the ends for the shoulders. So I'll thin the middle off to around about two and a half millimeters square, perhaps a little bit more and then I'll fl flatten it out. The bottom of the shank is going to be shaped into a D shape, a half round shape. Make sure that I'm spreading the right amount in the middle. So tighten the rolls as I go. Turn it around so that I don't pinch the metal. I'll go into the next one. I'm putting the strip that's going to form the shank on the shoulders against the stone and I can get a an overall reading that's taken me to six and a half centimeters which is way too much so I need to chop off the ends before I form this into a ring That'll be, I need around about 60 mil I want to avoid um, taking a piece out later on so I'll make it a little bit smaller than that I'll form this into the ring now, just want to show you where the diamond sits on the shoulder there. You can see there's metal either side of the stone. So the width I've got here is 4.2 mil. So I'll first of all with my ring bend I just bend up the two ends. And now I'll just work on getting the ends closer together. And they're not going to meet because there's going to be a big setting going inside there. So
all the time checking to see where I'm at and uh, where the gaps are and make sure I eliminate it's fitting with minimal gaps and I can probably minimize them even more just by filing across the setting at the connection point. I'm using the ring holder to hold the two components together whilst I solder them. These are very handy because you can guarantee that it's straight that way and also lined up properly that way. Opening up when it starts to get hot. Okay, I'll let the solder run right through and then I'll check that it's made it to the top of the joint and then that looks fine. At the bottom of the setting. And also I'll just take the inside edge of the setting off with the round burr. Put a little smear of beeswax along the shoulder. I'll do this one at a time, so I'll work on this shoulder and then I'll move on to the other. So I'm putting the stones on upside down. I'll put the first one, the one next to the big diamond, up close against the setting. There's about a one mil uh, step from the shoulder up to the setting. With a gap between them of around about a millimeter to form the bezel. I'll cut down the side of the shoulder as well like so. my three square hand file and this will be really efficient for putting the cuts in. Square burr to locate the centre. Once I've done that, I can see that I need to file up the outside to match up the hole. So it's a lot easier once there is a hole there to follow uh, that pattern. make sure that the spacing coming away from the shoulders looks correct as well as it being divided perfectly into quarters. And I'll draw the wire ready for the pause. Finish the groove off, making sure I don't cut anywhere but in the groove it's starting to pick up traction but I'm controlling it and just keeping it in there and just using the length of the drill to do that and I've drawn some wire down to 1.1 mil which is a good thickness for um, making a four claw ring it's a little And they used hard earlier, so I'm using medium now. 
try and keep the heat away from the shoulders because there's a lot of tension in the ring and um, if I overheat it, it will spring apart. Claws are in place, I'm ready to clean it up and set it. And you can see that the stone sits onto the setting, contacting the claws, and it's a little bit high, which means that once I do the seating, it'll click in nicely into position. And we'll start with the one closest to the center setting. I'll just try the stone, and it's just sat right on the edge there. It's going to be a gypsy setting. So need it to click in and the depth that I'm cutting the seating in is pretty much the teeth of the burr uh, are hidden when you look at it side on so and once you've done the first one the rest of it should be quicker to do because you've found your feet you know the depth to cut and how much to whirl the burr, burr around, open it out. So so I've shaped the tip of my Dremel and these are tips that you have to make yourself and it's it's got a sharpened point there and I'm going to tuck that into the setting and hammer around the inside Set the big diamond. I'm going to start the cut work with a three square because I can get it in there. So um, it wouldn't be what I'd normally do, but this is a safe way of starting the seating cut without contacting the top of the bezel there. I don't want to put any scratches there. So this little cut here is going to be only about half a mil above the bezel. I've got the largest heart burr in my collection. This is 6mm. This will just put the right profile to cut on the inside of the claw. I'm only going. And the stone should sit in nice and level, so that looks good. So now I'm going to just push the claws Towards the centre of the stone, I'm just going to use my the flat part of my um, snap nose or chain nose pliers. Just make sure it's level. Now I can tighten the stone push the claws as far as they'll go. On the claws. Just to close any gaps up. Now with a file with a safety edge, so I've got a uh, knife edge file and you can see how um, 
clear of teeth it is on the back side, so that's going against the diamond. Not that I've scratched the diamond, but um, we do avoid steel on any stones wherever possible. And back with the cup there. And that's eliminated any gaps between the claw and the crown of the stone. So the till marks, give it a final polish and then we'll take a look. Looking straight down onto the stone, all you can see are the four claws. You can't see any of the bezel there side on you can see that the cut work to set the stone was just right i've not overcut it so there's no gaps there it's just filled in nicely around the girdle of the stone also as the customer requested she wanted it as low as possible so you can just see the cullet there it's still protected if i put it on a ring stick but it's as low as i could get the setting so there we have it set polished rhodium plated ready for the customer.